card, like she said. I'm 17 and I am from Bellingham, Washington. Um, that's, it's kind of a small town. I'm like half hour from Canada. You know, they steal a lot of our milk. Turns out they have Costco in Canada, which I didn't know about. Um, so, I'm pretty normal as far as being a teenager goes. I mean, I like boys, I like going and doing things with my friends, except I have Tourette's. Um, and that's, that's honestly crazy saying right now. Um, it took me eight years, which is a little less than half of my lifetime to be diagnosed. Um, hasn't been fun at all. Um, there's been a lot of physical and mental pain that has gone through this and I am here today to share my story in hopes that you guys can relate to this and that this can pave the way for some kids, you know, to kind of have it easier than I did. So my story kind of starts when I was in second grade, I'm going to move this a little bit. Um, when I was in second grade, I started having really bad symptoms of ADD, uh, meaning they could never get me to sit down. I was throwing things, I was laughing all the time. Um, it just, overall, apologies to all the kids in the class would be in second grade. Um, my, my second grade teacher kind of emailed my parents and was like, hey, I think she's, she's got ADD, we should get her tested. So sure enough, the, re the results were ADD, an attentive type, and anxiety, which honestly, we're, we're really expecting. So soon after, I started seeing the only child psychiatrist in the city of Bellingham, and it's, it's a decently sized city, so the fact that there's only one in itself is kind of, kind of crazy. Um, I started seeing him and my first therapist to kind of start going over, you know, what does it mean to have these things, and what does that mean moving forward? So in elementary school, I was pretty much viewed as an outcast. I had very little friends. I had two girls in my neighborhood that I was really close with um, because everything, and I mean everything that was on my mind would come out of my mouth. I mean, I don't care if I saw a bird, I would let you know. I mean, you, you think about dogs and squirrel, that was me. I would point out the squirrels, I still do. But um, kind of just because of the way I acted, no one really took me seriously like ever. Um, my parents, of course, loved me dearly and so did my family, and so they were the only people who, when I just had struggles, would take me seriously because I was just kind of a goof all the time. And I, I still am. But that's, that's not a bad thing, right? So I started taking medications given to me by my psychiatrist at around age eight, and that's pretty early to be taking medications, right? So that in its own was kind of weird. And so for the next couple of years, we kind of started going on and off with different medications like stimulants and whatnot. Uh, but all of the stimulants have really bad, you know, side effects. I would stay up, I would wake up at three. I'm so sorry, mom, this sucks. I would wake up at three to six. It was either three to six or three to seven. I remember that. It was hours, hours of just you know, no sleep, so I was always tired, I was always cranky, and then the ticks showed up. And those ticks kind of showed up around when I was nine or 10, of just really simple little, you know, facial things. My favorite was, you know, kind of just with my lips and my nose, and that we just thought was medication related. So we stopped taking the medication, and it was gone. So that was kind of just a first little thing of, well, it's probably transient, right? Well, went off one of the stimulants because we were, we were just done with ADD medication. So basically, I've been drinking coffee since I was like 12. Um, yeah, t typical white girl things, right? Just the Starbucks, God bless. Well, <laughs> so the coffee helps, but you can't rely on coffee as much as I would love to. You can't. So coffee, you know, helps me focus, um, but it, it can't. It can't I take away the learning one. stuff that I started to have because of my ADD. And because of the way I process things, I never did well on testing, on little class testing when we did. Some of you did the activity that we did at the training where you would kind of have the time, whatever. I would never finish one of those because I was so nervous. So because of the way that I processed things, I never understood what I was being taught. I've never passed the math state testing, the standardized testing, and I am a junior in high school. 
I was just never getting the help that I needed. So, you know, that kind of, that was just kind of how things went up until about seventh grade. I had a teacher that targeted me because of my differences. And this is kind of where my, my stuff blossomed, where my anxiety started, where we started seeing some of the coexisting conditions that, you know, everyone hears so much about. Well, he used me as an example of what not to do. He told me I would never make it, that I wasn't gonna graduate high school, I would fail in life. Marin right there, don't be like her. That's exactly what he told me the entire year. I was finally removed from his class four days before school ended. But how did I react to his critiques and comments? You know, I was kind of smart ass. That's just how I've always dealt with things. That got me in deeper water, which didn't, you know, didn't help me get the stuff that I needed, the help that I needed because they all thought I was lazy. I just didn't understand, so I hid behind, you know, the defiance, the mood disorders. And that, up until now, has kind of been how I've dealt with things. Um, so looking back at it, the, you know, the mood disorder, all of the moodiness, that was just another thing to lay onto the coexisting conditions. It was just another thing that we should have seen, but we didn't. I had a couple teachers in eighth grade that were wonderful, got me through the year. I started to figure out things that helped me and didn't help me. Um, they had a 504 plan and didn't tell me that was happening, but I showed up anyways, because I was like, this is about me. I need to know what you're saying about me. So kind of from the beginning, I've always learned to kind of stand up for myself, because you know, when you're not taken seriously, and you have things that are going on, you want to be heard. And I was gonna make sure they were hearing me. I mean, it's hard not to, honestly. But then I started high school. And let me tell you guys, high school is sucky as it is. I mean, just everything about it is not fun. But then you add all of my, you know, anxiety and everything, and it just explodes. My first semester of my freshman year, I failed five out of six classes. The only class I passed with an A was band. I love music, that's how I cope with things. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> but that was the only class I passed, and then we hit a bump. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I kind of get worked up. This was, um, I was, I was on a stimulant, and I'm gonna take my glass off for this. Um, I was, so I was on a stimulant, and that combined with another medication, I crashed. I, I had one of those rage episodes that you guys probably parents you know that your kids have all the time. Like just one of those rage episodes. This one lasted three hours and I landed myself in Children's Hospital in Seattle for about a week. Um, I, was, I switched medications, um, we discussed how to transition back. It was so nice to be off the grid, but then we still had the question, how do we deal with this? Um, while I was there, I was pulled aside by one of their therapists and he said, well, we think you have autism which is a, I mean, autism isn't a bad thing, don't get me wrong, but that was almost a near misdiagnosis by a medical professional, which I, um, <laughs> I as a smart ass I was, just looked at him and went, no, but you might. <laughs> for, for, no, for no apparent reason, right? But that was just, if you said something to me, I would say it right back. That's, that's just kind of, you know, what my attitude was. So then I was discharged, and I went back to school, and they went, well, you don't really have a lot of credits. I don't know if you're gonna graduate. And I was like, well, am I gonna graduate at all? And they said, well, I, I, I don't think so. And I was like, okay, I'll just drop out then. So I'm still in school. They told me I would drop out. I am now standing here with a 3.0 GPA. which I have worked my butt off to get for. I've switched schools. I have been to every doctor I have had access to, but being told you won't make it, that was another thing. I was convinced I was just a failure, just because I didn't understand things, because no one was willing to help me and reach out and give me what I knew I needed. And I knew I was better than what they were saying. My IEP testing told me that I was smarter than 82% of the girls in my grade, and I went, okay, but the five out of six Fs. <laughs> Tell me about that. And he was like, 
that you you just can't show it. You're smart as heck. You just you don't know how to show it. And I mean, I, I guess I I think that you guys with Tourette's probably have been told the same thing: is that you're smart, you just can't show it. And you can. I mean, believe me. I'm sitting here. I've worked. I've found loopholes. That's one of my favorite things to say when I find loopholes driving and stuff. I just go loophole. Because that's, that's just what I do. I mean, I found ways around the struggles and the failure, and that's always been my biggest fear, is failing. But how else are you going to learn? I mean, you learn to walk by falling and standing up again. That's, that's just how you learn things, but I have always been pushed to success by everyone around me. That doesn't matter. You're going to be successful no matter what. But after I got back from Children's, they reduced my school schedule. And I just went, okay, well, this is, this is it. And then I switched schools. And this school, not only have they told me, okay, well, you're gonna have, like, you're gonna have a good GPA. I wasn't sure I was gonna graduate on time. They told me I would graduate eventually, but now because loopholes <laughs> and, you know, just the help from my teachers, I am now projected to graduate on time. So. <laughs> This school has been fantastic. I told them I had to be in band or else I wouldn't go. So I played the trumpet and the euphonium, which in case you don't know what that is, is a baby tuba. So I, I played that and it's, it's been fantastic. However, around September 2017, kind of in the middle, we do field shows. In the middle of that, I started to get the classic real, real bad. It was to the point where I couldn't look over at you guys. If this still happened, I couldn't look over there. I couldn't look up at the ceiling. I could not move my neck. And as a kid in band, you need to be able to look at the people that are telling you what you're supposed to do and whether or not you're gonna bump into someone. There was a lot of bumping into that season, let me just tell you. But, <laughs> but we were so confused. Um, I mean, I was kind of like, well, I mean, this, this is just, this is happening, this hurts, um, I can't control this. And I, I remember one of my friends just kind of going, why do you do that? And my answer was, I, I, don't, I don't know, which was really, that's never a good answer. If you don't know something about yourself, that's scary, right? So after a couple weeks, my parents and I, and you know, my family were getting pretty ticked off. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were getting pretty ticked off, right? So, both of my parents separately and my therapist called my, psych my psychiatrist kind of going, yo, what's up? Like, <laughs> what's going on? I mean, is this medication related? So we went in and he went, man, that sucks. This is kind of out of my wheelhouse. I'll have to, you know, send you to someone else. And sitting there as a kid who was struggling with pain every day, I've had nine day tension headaches, tension headaches for a month, you know, just, just in pain and I was angry. I didn't know, no one was telling me what was going on. So the fact that one of my doctors told me that he would have to send me to someone else, that hurt, that hurt a lot. So, you know, we, we scheduled an appointment with Dr. Zinner from Seattle Children's and we went in there and he looked at me and he said, don't even tell me what your tics are, I already know. Which was, which was kind of weird. Someone that you just met five seconds ago, just like, don't even tell me. I already know something about you that you didn't know about yourself until three weeks ago. That's, that's, that's pretty weird. So we started telling him about my history with school and all of you know the, the missing pieces that no one paid attention to. And he, he kind of was like, okay, well, here's the symptoms of Tourette's. Here's coexisting conditions I had every single one of them, everyone. <laughs> and I, I just thought of that as, oh, I have this disorder, this, 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 and ran out of fingers, right? You only have so much. But he summarized it with one word, and one word that I was told I would not be, and that is Tourette's. That just, that's such, and I, I don't like labels at all, but that was a label that in the end, makes so much sense and has helped so much, but it didn't click at first. I thought he said, you have something like Tourette's. And so we were like, okay, that's kind of cool. I texted one of my friends and I'm like, well, it sounds like this, but we don't know yet. We have to come back. 
and in the car, and I remember the song that's playing that will always stick with me is, um, you know, One Foot in Front of the Other by Walk the Moon, which is literally how I live my life. Is you fall, you just put another foot. That, that's, that's just, you, that's how you have to play things when you have something like Tourette's. You hit a bump, you have to put another foot in front of the other. So I remember hearing that song and just kind of going, okay, well, what's next? And my mom goes, wow, that's crazy. You have Tourette's. And I kind of looked at her and I was like, no, I don't. What, what are you talking about? And she's like, well, that, that's what he just said. And I was like, what, what, do you, what do you mean I have Tourette's? What is that? Why? My initial reaction, no one should have that reaction. I told my mom, I looked at her and I'm like, isn't that genetic? I don't want to have kids. I mean, there, there goes your shot at grandkids. I don't want anyone to have to go through what I have gone through. And I mean, yes, I do have one of the mild cases, but it, it, it still sucks, right? And so I just, I remember that feeling of horror. I looked at her and I was like, listen, I'm not going to school tomorrow. I need, I need to process this. And it took me about two weeks before I told anybody at all. Just, I didn't want anyone to know. I myself didn't know what dress was. I was like, mom, if I swear at you, I swear at you because I am mad, right? Like, you're, you're gonna know the difference. But I was confused. I thought, you know, the stigma was what was going through my head. And then I started to learn all the facts about it. I went home and educated myself. So then when someone asked, I could give them a response. But for the first eight years of my life, it was pretty okay. I became a problem child. I'm the middle one, expected. But I, <laughs> I, I was okay for a while. And then the eight years after that was just literally fighting every day for that one word. Every day, I mean, 365 times eight. That's, that's a lot of waiting and a lot of pain and a lot of tears and waking up every day and just going, man, I just want to sleep because this is just terrible. I can't do this anymore. None of you should have to feel like that. Let me tell you right now. Wake up every day and think, wow, I'm pretty awesome. If anything, Tourette's just makes you cooler than you already are. I've met some amazing people, and Tourette's is just, just a little, little piece of that. But no one, and I'm telling you, I am here right now, because I don't want anyone, any one of my friends, any people that I meet, to have to go through what I went through. I mean, some, some people take hits so others don't have to, and that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to be trained, I'm here to meet with these people, I'm here to go out and the handprint on others' hearts. Because that sucked. And to have me, to have someone like me, when I was younger, would have meant so, so much. So, if I could be that person for other kids, even if they never meet me, I don't care, social media, even if just looking at me and hearing my story helps someone, I've done my job. So, I'm really, really hoping that you guys can take something from my story, and if it comes up in the future, you can think of, you know, just something that I've told you and go, man, this kind of sucks, but I can do it. And there's this quote that my friend on my journal gave me. It's a Winnie the Pooh quote that says, you are braver than you believe, and stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. That goes out to literally anybody in this room. I don't, I don't care what they tell you. This is true. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Thank you.